Matsumoto Toru no Kabushiki Hishogak is our first stock market simulator on the Famicom. I'm not going to say it becomes a big genre on the system, but if I'm counting correctly, there are six of them. These games post a bigger challenge for me than normal. The information and interfaces tends to be pretty technical. It's not necessarily something that I could power through with a dictionary. You also kind of need knowledge of how markets, and in particular the Japanese stock market, work. Or rather, worked in 1988. Electronic trading has kind of shifted things there. Toru Matsumoto was the author of Investment Guides, and that's literally everything I could find on him. He seems to be a relatively obscure figure, and his reputation doesn't seem to have lasted past the Japanese economy collapsing around 1990. I mean, when your game is called Surefire Stock Lesson, that should tell you the kind of attitude you're dealing with. At 9,800 yen, Matsumoto Toru no Kabushiki Hishogak is the most expensive Famicom game we've seen so far. It did come with one of Matsumoto's books, but we're going to see prices like this on games targeted toward an adult audience. The goal in this game is to take 1 million yen and turn it into 100 million yen in the space of two years. For those of you who don't want to do the math, that's a 900% yearly return on investment. In 1988, the Tokyo Stock Exchange was at the absolute height of the bubble economy and grew an absolutely insane 40%. So this game is slightly optimistic. The game doesn't work on a proper calendar. It has four weeks per month, and you're always working Monday through Friday. There's no holidays or weekends involved. The first thing you need to know when you start to play is that the game clock never stops. You start the day at about 8.30, the market opens at 9, closes for lunch from 11 to 1, and then trading ends at 3 p.m. The clock doesn't stop for anything, and as you're poking around the interface or chatting with your broker, it's still ticking away. So you might get a gut feeling that a stock that's down a bit might suddenly start swinging back up, go in to buy it, and by the time you've gone through the interface, it's already up past what you wanted to buy it at. All of the companies involved are real companies on the Tokyo Stock Exchange. So you could buy some Sony stock, or my former employer, NTT, or 98 other companies. However, there's an awful lot of restrictions on trading in this game. You can only buy or sell once per day, and you can only hold shares in three companies. Besides making money on the stock market, you need to do things to improve your life, like get married, have a kid, buy a house. Your life has to reach level 25 as well before the end of the two-year period. And as you're doing this, you also have hit points. Doing a lot of actions gets you worn out, and if your hit points run out, you collapse from exhaustion and it's game over. You can take up hobbies or go on trips to recover your health. The interface is a little bit confusing, the first four icons are for the stock market itself. You've got buy, sell, and page through items. When you go to buy, you have to pick out a company, and whether you're buying or selling, you have to talk to your broker. You can tell your broker how many shares you want to buy or sell, and then you can also tell him if you want him to go to the market and wait for the price, or if you have a price that you want and are willing to wait for that. If you try to time the market, then you go to this screen where you can watch it tick throughout the day and hit the A button when you're ready to transact. Stocks that are going for under a thousand yen, you have to buy in increments of 1,000. If they're going for under 10,000 yen, then you can buy in increments of hundreds. And if they're going for more than 10,000 yen, you can buy single shares. It's possible to request to buy far more shares than you can afford, and there's no limiter in the game on you. You'll have to do the math on what you can buy yourself. The first time you can't pay, your broker just gets mad at you. The second time, it's game over. The next four buttons on the main interface are for information. Twice a day you can request historical stock data. It costs 500 yen for each report, 
and it only accumulates from the start of the game on. The printer is where you get your stock tips. You can buy a newspaper, or talk to some people who might have a hot tip for you. The briefcase is where you bring up your own status. It's where you can see your cash and holdings. The exclamation point are for events. Those occur randomly throughout the game, though there are a few that occur on regular days, like your income at the start of the week. I didn't get this event, but apparently the game is pretty infamous for having four or five of your grandfathers die each time through the game. The last block of four are a bit more miscellaneous. This icon is where you can choose to do a leisure activity. And this is where you can go to buy a house. You can also go to the bank and take out a loan. The strategy guides I found all recommended doing this early on. Finally, the calendar page advances to the next day. One thing that bothered me in this game is that you can only really see the opening and closing prices of the stocks when the market is open. So it's actually pretty difficult to review how a long-term investment is doing. The game has a battery save, and it saves after every day and every event. If you try to avoid bad events by hitting reset or turning the power off, the game docks you half your cash. If you do manage to win, then you can enter a code on the title screen to get stock advice from Toru Matsumoto himself. Matsumoto Toru no Kabushiki Hishogaku must have been a success. About a year later, it's going to get a sequel. I'm going to guess that further sequels weren't made due to the stock market crash in 1990, putting a bit of a damper on the stock game. I feel like this is a game that's dense with information and has the look of realistic stock trading, though the heavy trading restrictions make it obvious that it's not. I just don't see myself ever wanting to go back to play this one. It's dense without being engaging, and though I only played through a few months of trading, I wound up feeling like there was too little to do, especially at the beginning. I doubt any of the stock games are going to thrill me, but this game felt like playing a spreadsheet where somebody locked all the cells.